Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Hope all is well. We are approaching the very holy day of Purim. We know that from a certain perspective, if we look at Purim, it is actually the holiest day of the year. How do we know this? Well, because Yom HaKippurim, Yom Kippur, is considered generally to be the holiest day of the year. However, when you look carefully at what this word means, Yom HaKippurim, it, it, it can be actually looked at, our sages teach us, that it means... Yom HaKippurim, it is the day that is like Purim. So we're saying that Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year, is actually like Purim. So what does this mean? This means that Purim's higher. Why? Because we're saying Yom Kippur is so amazing, it's like Purim. When you compare something to something else in, in this world, you say, wow, this chicken's amazing. It's, all, it, it's like the chicken from, from this place. So obviously, you're saying that the thing you're comparing it to is obviously higher. You're saying, this is amazing, but it's like the other thing. It's not as good, but it's like it. It reminds me of it. So, Yom Kippur is like Purim. So this means that the day that, is, that we're approaching is so powerful. We have to grab it and jump into it. Let's learn a bit about Purim. Let's understand, let's understand a bit of the greatness of Purim and how it's connected to the coming of Mashiach. Well, well, we know that when Mashiach arrives, there will be such a tremendous divine light revealed, the pleasure, the, 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 the revelation, the intensity that, we'll, that we will experience in the days of Mashiach will be so great that all of the holidays will be nullified. What does this mean? It doesn't mean, God forbid, that we're not going to have any holidays anymore, but it means that they won't be as important compared to their importance now, compared to the average day. They won't shine, they won't stand out as much. Now you have this holiday, you have that holiday, you have all these different holidays that all have different emotions and different feelings to them that are very unique and stand out a lot. But in the days of Mashiach, the light, the divine light that will be revealed will be so intense on an average day that holidays will be more unrecognizable. Except for one specific day. And this is the day of Purim. Even in the days of Purim, uh, in the days of Mashiach, Purim will stand out. This is something that we have to jump into, get excited about, because we have Purim right in front of us. Purim is a time where we can ask anything of Hashem. We can enter the Hashem's chamber. We know that when we read Megillah Esther, the scroll of Esther, a lot of times when we speak about the king, it is actually an analogy referring to Hashem. We're speaking about Ahasuerus, but we're really talking about Hashem. So Esther was able to enter the king's the king's room without permission. Normally, if somebody enters the king's room without permission, they're sentenced to death. Forget about it. But Esther, on this special day, was able to enter the king's chamber. So too, we can enter our king's chamber. Meaning, normally, we can't. We could always ask Hashem whatever we want. We could always call out to Hashem. But sometimes, based on our behavior, Hashem's going to evaluate whether we deserve this specific thing or not. Of course, we can improve our ways. We could do tshuva and we can sweeten our own image in the eyes of Hashem. We can always return to Hashem. We can always, He'll always answer us. But sometimes it takes more time. But on Purim, He is more accessible. His, our requests are more quickly answered. So we have to jump into this and ask from Hashem. We also have to understand that this, the, the Hebrew calendar, every year in the Torah, the, the cycle goes around. Every year, we have Rosh Hashanah, we have Yom Kippur. Every year we have the same holidays again. But each year, on these specific days, a new light is revealed. The same light that was revealed on Purim will be revealed again this year, but to an even greater degree. Why? Because as time goes, we get closer to the days of Mashiach. The divine Hashem's revelation is even stronger within the world. We just have to tap into it. So on this year, Yom Kippur, big revelations are going to take place. There are different laws, different halachas, different things we have to do on Purim. There's also a fast tomorrow, the fast of Esther, which will take place the day before Purim. We have to hear the Megillah, the scroll of Esther, read twice. And we have to hear it. We can't miss a single word. If we miss a single word, we have to rehear it all over again. I'm not going to go through all the halachas in this video because there, there are many details. And this... There's, there's many, many available halachas. You sh if you would like to learn more about the halachas of Purim, you should search up on Chabad.org, Purim, and you will be able to find a list of details. I'm sure there's also many other YouTube videos of rabbis going through those exact laws. And it's very important, I suggest all of you, if you're Jewish, to really get involved in learning, because this is the way we connect to Hashem. Hashem's laws aren't, are, are not just suggestions. They're the way that we can channel the Hashem's light into the world connect our soul to our source, to connect our body to our source. So we have to understand that 
a lot of great things are about to be revealed on Purim. Purim is a connection to etzim, to essence of God. There's an Indian, an idea where people drink alcohol and Purim and they get to a place where they don't know the difference between Baruch Mordechai and Arur Haman. How evil is Haman and Mordechai? You can't tell the difference. Why? Because in Hashem's source, there's no difference between good and evil. Everything is one is equally irrelevant before Hashem. In this world, it's true that we have to do good and we have to stay away from bad. But from Hashem's perspective, everything is, is nullified. So we have to connect to that place. We, our connection has to be so deep to Hashem that we see God everywhere. Of course, we have to be responsible for our actions. We can't do sins, God forbid. We're responsible. Hashem will deal with us if we do sins, God forbid. But we have to realize that no matter how good we do, it is, it is still equally tiny before Hashem. No matter how much Torah we learn, no matter how close we feel to Hashem, we can always be infinitely closer because there's no limits to Hashem. This is what we have to connect to on Purim. That how Hashem is beyond any limitations, but yet He fills the limitations and He connects to us at our limitations. In our limitations. And we have to realize that what is going on in the world right now, if we see the news with all the wars, with all the, the stuff that's been happening in the world the past few years, especially now in the past month, all more intense events are taking place. We have to realize that Hashem is, 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 Hashem is turning up the engine of Geula. Hashem is speeding up the process of redemption. We know that the Lubavitcher Rebbe himself told us that we are in the last generation of exile, the first generation of Mashiach. This was said over 30 years ago. So imagine how much closer we are right now. When we take this into our hearts, we're going to get excited and we're going to re realize that all of the events that are actually taking place in the world right now are a sign of Mashiach's coming. And we, we should appreciate the fact that each and every one of us has the power to bring Mashiach. Each and every one of us has Mashiach within us, has Moshe Rabbeinu within us, has Mordechai within us. We learn about Mordechai HaYehudi. This is the first place in the whole Tanakh, in the Torah, in, the, in all of our sources where we see the word Yehudi, Mordechai HaYehudi. Mordechai the Jew. We are Jews, we have to be proud of who we are, and if you're not Jewish, you can also be a righteous Noahide, and you can connect to Hashem and bring Mashiach. By following the seven laws of Noah and all their details, you fulfill the purpose of creation, and you connect yourself to Hashem entirely, and you build, your, and you cause Hashem tremendous pride in you. We have to realize that Mordechai, what did Mordechai do? When this evil decree by Hashverosh and Haman were caused against our people and they wanted to destroy us, Mordechai, he didn't go fight. He didn't go cry. He did cry, actually. But he didn't fight. He didn't, uh, pa pa he didn't uh, run away. What did he do? He gathered the Jewish children into, into the public square and he started reciting verses, Torah verses with them. And the Lubavitch Rebbe, the Rebbe who also had many gatherings of children as well with this same intensity. The Rebbe tells us in a Sicha that when Mordechai saw all these children reciting the Torah verses, he knew that they won. He knew already the decree, the decree would be cancelled. He knew they won the war. He didn't say, oh, when Esther was found favor before the king, he knew they would be won. No. When he saw the children reciting the verses of Torah, he knew that they won. So whoever you are, if you have children around you, you should always encourage your young children to, to speak words of Torah. You should know that the words of Torah spoken by children are, 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 are the most precious words before Hashem. We all have the little child inside of us. We're all the children of Hashem. So we have to remember that Hashem loves us just like a father loves his children infinitely more. Let's get excited for the days of Mashiach, for Purim. And may, may Mashiach come even before Purim. May Hashem bless you all.